tuned. We've got two child stars, and boy, do they have a tale to tell about the industry. Don't go away. You're watching Reach Out. Welcome to Reach Out. I'm Christina McCauley, your new host of Reach Out, and we have got, let me tell you, a great show today. Two very special guests, Mr. Paul Peterson, former child star of the Donna Reed Show, and Mr. Robbie Rist. You are um, formerly known as uh, Cousin Oliver from the Brady Bunch, yeah, 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 as yeah. well as a, a number of other shows. And yeah. pretty much what we're talking here today about is child stars and uh, very timely especially with the things going on with Michael Jackson yes um, well it ha as it happens there have always been child stars mm -hmm. uh, Hollywood didn't invent this it actually began in this country back in the 1849 when the first child singer came out of the gold fields a lot of Crabtree was her name and, mm -hmm. and there has always been an affection for young performers because they're so unusual Mm -hmm. They truly are talented, and when you have someone major like a Shirley Temple or before her Jackie Coogan and Diana Sarah Carey that can carry a whole studio and sometimes a whole culture, uh, you got to give credit where credit's due. Kids mm -hmm. are really an important part of the entertainment business. And your show, I mean, everybody, you wa w Paul walked in today and everybody was, everybody remembers Paul Peterson and, and everybody remembers you, Robbie, also, but... The actuality, I think, of your circumstances is sort of the untold story here. Can you tell us a little bit about both of your, your experiences working as a child star in the entertainment industry? Well, I don't know if, if we're in that way unique other than, I mean, we were on, we were on TV. Yes. Right. So maybe, maybe that that maybe that sort of separates it a bit, but I mean. But you weren't going to school with other kids. Your your classmates were other kids in the child entertainment industry, no? Yeah, well, a fair amount of the time. I mean, I got an award for missing 133 days of junior <laughs> high school. So. Uh, Congratulations, yeah. Robbie. Yeah, you know, it's a dubious honor, but you know, I'll take it. Kids, uh, don't take this uh, advice at home. Yeah, yeah, totally. Well, but I mean, but the thing is, that, I mean, there are. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, I I don't think every kid is pushed into it. I think some kids are genuinely natural-born performers, That's and right, and right. and uh, and and you know to deny them that thing is also unhealthy. Uh, I, I think the biggest concern is to watch out for predators. You right. know, uh, that's the that's the I think that's the real X factor in all of this. Right. At the end of the day, when I watch today's kids or mm -hmm. at my era or before. Uh, about the best the industry can do, and frankly the government as well, is to protect the money and to provide a, a decent education. The rest is really up to chance. Uh, it, it, you know, the artist's temperament, the kid who's a really good singer or mm -hmm. dancer or actor may not have the character necessary to deal with this business. That's always a questionable thing. And it depends, too, on what you're famous for. Now, if you were, for example, Sue Lyon, who did the original Lolita, she became, at least to a great part of the world, this super attractive sexual creature. Mm -hmm. Well, she was 14 years old. Right. You turn that child loose in, into civilian life, w well, what do you think is going to happen? Mm -hmm. You know, the men are going to be lining up because they b were drooling watching Lolita. Now, Paul, you're also the president and founder of um, an organization called A Minor Consideration, and it's yes. basically a child advocacy group for kids That's who are stars. <laughs> Well, it started for the kids in the entertainment business, mm -hmm. and our initial mission was for former kid stars who were down on their luck. Uh, in 1990, when we began, Rusty Hamer and Trent uh, Lehman and Tim Hovey had just committed suicide. Mm -hmm. uh, Drew Barrymore was writing an autobiography at age 15, the, admitting to alcoholism and drug addiction. Todd Bridges was in jail on attempted murder. Bonaducci had lost yet another job. <laughs> You know, uh, Gary Coleman was suing his parents, so we had a, a population to deal with. And what was interesting is from that beginning, 
where we established the precedent of child stars helping each other, mm -hmm. uh, it has just really grown because prevention beats intervention every time. We've had our losses uh, just this past week. Jonathan Brandeis, who is the boy on Sequest uh, and starred with Chuck Norris in the movie Sidekick, uh, committed suicide last Wednesday. So, yeah, I know it's a shock, isn't I it? Know. Because it gets buried in this wow. swarm of news no we get. Yeah. And, and so we have losses of River Phoenix or mm -hmm. Dana Plato or Lonnie O'Grady. But in the, for the most part, we intervene successfully when we know there's trouble. And the business has, has come to understand that it's better to call us before something bad happens than to sit there afterward and feel guilty. Now, Robbie, what was your experience with, obviously, I mean, we've seen a lot of tragedy, and I, I just, it's hard to believe that all of these problems that these child stars are having and so many addictions and those sorts of things, it's hard to believe that that's merely coincidence. Your experience seems like it was a little more positive uh, in the well, industry. we were talking earlier, uh, I think behind every uh, kid performer who has any sort of serious problems, you can draw a line directly back to their parents. Mm -hmm. I think in every case like that, somebody really dropped the ball. Someone wasn't paying attention. I think entertainment uh, is, is craziness. And uh, I think a parent who's going to have their kid in that line of work has to be ever vigilant, super aware, because it attracts so many different kinds of personalities. You don't know, mm -hmm. you don't know who's around the corner. You know, you, you don't know who's, who's coming down the path. And people on the surface, uh, you know, it's even happened with me. You know, people on the surface will come by, you like, basically try to get involved with your family and your life, and uh, their 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 motives are not uh, entirely above board. You know, they're. they're you have to watch out for predators all of the time. Right. Did you learn anything bad on this set, or did I learn anything bad? What do you mean? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, bad, you're in a you're, hey. in, you're in a grown up world. Right, you're in a grown up world, I and mean, you're... Well, yeah. So what does bad mean? I mean, you know, definitely the ride. I think that that young performers get is unique, uh, and and your it's it's a strata of the population that's that thin. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you and and. Uh, I mean, now that there's you, maybe uh, you know there was really no rule book for right. it. There's and no so, Paul Peters. Well, yeah, so so you're you know you're experiencing all of these things that that come and happen, and if you if you have a parent that's aware, you have somebody to talk to about it. Right. If not, it's just like well, I guess grownups behave that way, and that way, and yeah, you have that's right. You have, all it's those confused. those hypocritical adults. But right. What, what you learn that, but you know your circumstance was actually. Uh, in the scheme of things, pretty mm. positive because yeah. you had more than one child to deal with. You were not isolated. You mm -hmm. weren't True. like Dennis the Menace being uh, a Jay North. Sure, sure. Uh, an isolated celebrity who mm -hmm. was leading the show. Right. Uh, you had six people, eight kids right. around you in, in right. your in your schoolroom. Mm -hmm. uh, at, at the best of times on the Donna Reed show, there were two kids in mm -hmm. the schoolroom. Now, it got a little better as I got older because then my chums on the show had, you know, seven out of 13 contracts, so I had more contact with right. my own age group. But there are plenty of kids who are entirely isolated. Mm -hmm. Shirley Temple the... was not allowed to eat lunch with the kids in right. the movies Which with Which is her. unbelievable. Why is that? Like you were both mentioning to me before we got on set this mm -hmm. e this afternoon. When we you told you the good stuff. The yeah. good stuff. <laughs> you said, you know, stuff that can get a suit. you also, on the positive point, you know, you're being told by a bunch of adults who don't lie. Adults don't lie, right? Right, right. I'm great. I'm wonderful. Sure. I'm this. I, There's I, was, that I was told I was a young John Barrymore when I was 12. <laughs> And what you know, a compliment. And I, yeah, and, and like years later when I, like, you know, I mean, granted, yes, an incredible actor, you know, but also, <laughs> what, I think he was a drunk. Uh, an I, absolute you know? stumbled down, <laughs> fall yeah. down drunk. You know, so, yeah. wow, you know, I mean, maybe in my 20s I was John Barrymore a few times, but. Uh, <laughs> well, a, now, Paul, I have a question for you. You got started pretty much when you were nine years old. Were that the, was the first professional job, but I'd been singing and dancing with lessons, endless, endless lessons uh, from the age of five. Uh, and it only happened that uh, I lived close to the center of the entertainment business in, in Burbank and then uh, North Hollywood. And there was an open audition for the Mouseketeers. This is back in 1955. And innocently, innocently, I was taken to this open cattle call and, and was hired. 
and uh, seven weeks later, I became the world's first ex Mouseketeer, because I didn't uh, know that that child performers are not supposed to be children. The very thing they mm -hmm. hired me for, you know, that spark and the right. discipline, that little twinkle in your eye, and the kind of you know, here's a kid that can give you trouble. Mm -hmm. I got fired for because I didn't believe in the discipline. There were ladders on sound stages. Well, ladders, you go up ladders. <laughs> right. There was an open uh, uh, paint shop. It didn't have a lock on the door. Mm -hmm. So I went in there, and there are paints. Because right. you were a kid. That's well, what kids yeah. do. Well, that's the thing, though, is that they, they tell you that you, you, uh, I, I think all kid performers have to sort of figure out how they're going to fit in this adult universe that's right. mm -hmm. uh, where they're supposed to act like adults when they're around the adults, but somehow when you go back to school and you know I mean uh, did you ever go to like school school or was it all I studio went, school? I went yeah. uh, all studio school from uh, the middle of seventh grade mm -hmm. until third year of college. Uh -huh. wow. uh, for example I graduated University High I was there two days one day to register and one day to graduate mm -hmm. and it was kinda silly because I, everybody knew I was there I mean my you know I got a song in the top ten at this mm -hmm. time and uh, my date was the current centerfold from Playboy, and uh, I, I, I just didn't. Never went out didn't, with Playboy. Son. You didn't. Oh, I, I, had, yeah. I had a string there. <laughs> yeah. it was heaven. You did it so much better than well, I did. Well, uh, but that, <laughs> it, you know, it was that kind of celebrity. Being yeah, a bubblegum right. star is fun. Sure. I loved fast cars and faster women, and you know, in my era, sex couldn't kill you. Right. 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 So mm -hmm. I had a lot of fun. Changed. Don't go away. You think your kid has what it takes? Well, we're going to give you the pros and the cons of being a child star. That's coming up next on Reach Out. It wasn't about giving my baby up. <laughs> Emily. Let's go home and plant some flowers. They all love me. Adoption. It was about giving her more. It's about love. These look so innocent. But when they belong to a teenager, they can be a sign of ecstasy use. Ecstasy is a drug that can cause brain damage, heart failure, and even death. At Shriners Hospitals, children receive state-of-the-art medical care totally without charge, believe it or not. And there's a Shriners Hospital helping kids from this area. So if you know a child with orthopedic problems or severe burns, the Shriners could help. Call this number, Shriners, giving help and hope to kids for over 80 years. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us here on Reach Out. I'm Christina McCall, your new host, and we've got two special guests if you're just joining us now, uh, some child stars. And hey, Paul, I know a lot of people know you from the Donna Reed show. Yes, yes. Can we talk a little bit about what it was really like being a child star on the Donna Reed show? Well, sure. That wasn't the only thing I did. I, I mentioned sure. earlier about being one of the original Mouseketeers. Mouseketeers. And having been fired, I became pretty disciplined when, mm -hmm. I, when I did get work. And what happened is I got more work than most other kids. And the jobs got bigger and bigger and more important. Playhouse 90s and Lux Video Theaters and then big movies with Cary Grant and Sophia Loren. And then I got a job, oddly, at age 12, that lasted eight years. And guess what? It changed my life. Yeah. Now, in my era, uh, I was the pesky, you know, younger brother, and I bedeviled Shelley Fabre. It was great <laughs> fun because that was, in fact, our relationship. But along about age 15 and 16, as the voice changes and I start to shave, there out on the ABC horizon is Ricky Nelson, who is using his television celebrity to sell songs. Well, I knew a good thing when I saw it, and when they asked me to sing, I couldn't wait. Shelley was mortified. She didn't want to have anything to do with it. And because of the popularity of these shows, and remember, that you're talking only three networks in my day. Right. You know, you had three choices, and on Thursday night, a great chunk of America decided to watch ABC in our show. Um, so the experience of growing into my, you know, late adolescence uh, was really quite fun. I tell people over and over, it's fun to be rich and famous. Mm -hmm. And I was. You know, this is a show that was in everybody's living room and all over the country. 
uh, what they didn't tell me is, is uh, vacation pay is real poor in the entertainment industry. And when they were done with me, they were done with me. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a straightforward decline. Uh, it, the year after the Donna Reed show, I worked 16 weeks, then eight weeks, then four weeks, then not at all. Because guess what? My time was over. And but that well, had been your whole life up to that Absolutely. Point. It was my definition of myself. I was supposed to be famous. I was supposed to grow up to be Cary Grant. Well, it didn't happen. And if you, if for any kid in my circumstance, mm -hmm. whether, the, whether the endeavor is, is Olympics athletics, uh, whether it's tennis or football, if you've sacrificed your education and your character development, you're at risk. Mm -hmm. And that's why, and we've had, we've had the industry actually pay for survey, surveys. For the population I'm talking about, high achieving youngsters, they have three times the national average in substance abuse. Three times. Now, That's that scary. it tells you something. Mm -hmm. So what, what we address today is looking 20 years down the road all the time. And, and this what is I for your parents. organization. It's that's, called a minor consideration. That's if you right. haven't heard of it, where can people find it if they're uh, well on the internet? There's tons of stuff. Um, www.minorcon.org. M-I-N-O-R-C-O-N.org. We are a tax-free uh, uh, charitable institution, right. which has really grown beyond my wildest expectations, and we've we've gotten into areas. Uh, that are really important, I think, globally. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 that sounds so pretentious, <laughs> e except globally, 250 million children go to work every day. 250 million. And also, if you're doing that kind of really good work, that's not really being pretentious. No, right, no. I agree, Robbie. Um, yeah, right on. Yeah, what you know, that's that's the real line. deal. You it, know. It, it ain't bragging if you do it. Yeah. Right. Uh, we, we, are, we are singularly effective. We have passed seven pieces of legislation. Uh, mostly by saying to people, don't you think that the children in the entertainment business should have it at least as good as animals? Because every movie you've ever been to that had a dog mm -hmm. right there at the end, it says, no animal was killed or injured in the right. making of this film. Right. Well, I want the same deal for kids. And that's a good point. Now, R Robbie, you, you had a, a pretty positive experience, but you were, you were kind of all over the board. I mean, you were... Robbie Rest, you were unc or cousin Oliver right. on the Brady Bunch. Yeah. Well, I, I never had the same kind of. Uh, I had a different ride than you did. Yes, you indeed. had you had eight years yeah. in which, you know, I mean, uh, you know, you, you lived through that America's sweetheart thing. <laughs> yeah, really, you, know, you understand I what did, I mean? I, I, you know? I did. I, you know, um, and and where lucky guy, the, yeah, lucky guy. <laughs> the Brady Bunch gig for me was six <laughs> weeks. Right. right. Um, I was a semi-regular on Mary Tyler Moore for a couple of years, which meant I was doing two or three episodes a year or mm -hmm. something like right. that. So I never really, in, in the same, I've always been a trench warfare guy. Right. And um, then you also did, I love this fact, you do the, did the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You did the, the movies, voice yeah. for yeah. Michelangelo, yeah. which is yeah. fascinating yeah. for a lot. I mean, after the Brady Bunch thing. You really segued a bunch of generations. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the turtle thing keeps swinging around. It's swinging around now, you know, and the Brady Bunch thing never stops. It's yeah. like, it seems like there's always a new generation of kids. But, Robbie, like, you, you know, said your mom kind of, your mom, if your day was over, that was it. You didn't right. care if they were sh in the middle of shooting right. a scene. You well, you know, home. I mean, there was, there was that, I mean, and it was an awful thing that happened on the Twilight Zone movie with the, the kids that got hit by the helicopter that went down. Yeah, with Vic Morrow. Yeah, when Vic dead. Morrow died. At 3.30 in the morning. 3.30 in the morning. Again, the hell were the parents? Yeah. What, you know, and, and I mean, I, I wouldn't That's wish that. Question. I wouldn't wish that on anyone, but boy, I bet it gives them pause to think. What now, what you is know, your... Because that's, that's, that's the the end result of what I think we're kind of talking about here. If, the if extremity. The parents, if the parents don't pay attention, mm -hmm. uh, it, the industry will take advantage of the children. Right. And they do it because of parental weakness or naivety. And, well, and they're, th well, but also, you know, they're throwing around $50 million. That's right. Uh, $50 million, in the, I think, in the industry's eyes is worth somebody's life. Uh, maybe not, you know, consciously. You know, no one says, well, you know, that's all fine. But... But yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well. <laughs> but ultimately, yes. Th yes, there is a dollar cost to human lives. Yeah. And, and the, really? The, it's that, so sad. Well, it, it, but you know, when you're an adult, you know, you take yeah, your I mean, chances. You, 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 go, you, go to, you, you go to war, same mm -hmm. kind of deal. Um, you're sending children into harm's way doing that. Exactly. And that's, that's got a dollar figure attached to it. Well, if your kids wanted to go into acting, say, or mm -hmm. if they signed a big network deal, mm -hmm. would you let them do it, Robbie? Uh, 
Well, uh, it will be children. up to them. Uh, it will be up to them at least. Is this really what you want to do? I mean, you know, you're talking <coughs> about... I mean, I think all kid performers end up being uh, badly socialized adults. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and that uh, that's true uh, as, really? well, because, as because well as really? short because yeah <laughs> <laughs> because no I, I think you uh, <laughs> you uh, you spend a lot of time with a small group of people mm -hmm. rather than in a, just a, a throng of your peers yeah. you know uh, I mean I'd I'd be on TV and I'd go back to school and you know I mean there were plenty of nice people and all of that mm -hmm. was fine but um, you were Robbie Rist. Yeah. <laughs> Cousin Oliver. Right, right. You know, I mean, automatically I was sort of living a life that was like, different. Mm -hmm. And there's yeah. nothing more deadly when you're a teenager than to be different. Yeah. You so know, true, it does isn't say, it? Oh, of course it is. Yeah. And if people would just close their eyes for a second and remember what it was like in third grade when you could be wounded to the quick if someone said, your ears are funny. Right. You know, or you wore glasses and people... Mm -hmm. I, it, it, Children are really, yeah, they're amazing and tough and durable, and but cruel. they're also, and, oh, well, they sure can be. They sure can be. But y'all are, we're all supposed to learn with that. The, mm -hmm. the problem is, I think, that it's so abnormal in terms of development mm -hmm. that you never really quite catch up. Now, I'm, st I'm in my 50s, and it's only now that when I sit down with my age contemporaries, mm -hmm. that we kind of are all on the same page now. Really? Yeah, um, I'm starting to feel comfortable with people. Yeah, uh, and, yeah. and it, particularly yeah. my own age group. Before, I mean, before, I was comfortable sitting down, for example, with Jackie, Coop, uh, uh, Jackie Cooper or Mickey Rooney, 25 years my senior, because, I, you know, I've with. been working for 50 years, and I'm 58. Right, right. And, and now, that whole experience alters you. One of the things we try to do, and you heard me say this earlier, you know, look 20 years down the road, and I say this to parents, have an exit strategy, because life in this business does not last forever. Exactly. And that's Think about what you're doing, and when they ask you to make those weekend appearances or, oh, come, come work after hours, no. say no. Mm -hmm. That's how Ron Howard's parents did it. They mm -hmm. were so savvy because they were already industry veterans. Right. Rance and Gene were in the business. And that's one of the things I love about your your organization, the Minor Consideration. Mm -hmm. Can't plug it enough. I know. Is, <laughs> it's true, though. I mean, a lot of if you if you are considering sending your children to you know to become these stars or these star camps, you really need to consider take a good look at yourself as a parent. Yes. Because it's all pretty much falls onto the parents. If you're not in the business yourself, mm -hmm. and you're going to put your kid into it, assume everyone's a predator. That's right. Go into it assuming everybody is now not. Not to the point where you're not going to let your kid work on anything, but assume that everybody comes down the pike is going to screw you. Right. You know, it, it's it's the same sort of sensibility a parent has to have. Let's say your child is taking piano lessons. Mm -hmm. The sensible parent, when they first come to the piano teacher's house, is to sit there and pay attention. Don't drop your kids off right. in the company of an adult whose background you have no idea about. Don't do stuff like that. But a minor I, consideration in the theatrical unit. Yeah, no, just go get ahead. You're doing fine. <laughs> we provide the guidance and support for even the most inane question. That's what we do, and we right. do it for free. If you get that solicitation from somebody on the street that says, for only $2,000, your, your kid could be in a commercial, run. Yeah. Really? And call us. Guess what? We actually answer the phone. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm telling you, we this have monthly great. orientations at Screen Actors Guild it's important. And after every month. I mean, you're, you're also talking about, a, 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 I, I think, what is probably a, a problem that we have in this country <laughs> is I, I have friends who are school teachers, mm -hmm. and there are parents, plenty of them, who look at school as a babysitting that's right. As a babysitting thing, and they, and they drop the kid off in front of school, not even necessarily watching them walk in. And the same bye bye. Yeah, and you don't yeah. even know who's on the you don't even know who's on the sides of the fence, you know. So that's a good point. Yeah, I mean that's a I mean a, a, a fair amount I think of what we're talking about is practical, just common sense. Right. Pay attention. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Which brings me before we end the show, Michael Jackson. This is a new you know a timely mm -hmm. moment. Child I hope star. it's not true. Boy, don't but, we all? But it, if it is true, it wouldn't surprise me at all. This is classic parental child abuse stuff. And and I keep saying to people over and over. What did you expect? Right. What did you expect from yeah. a boy who was beaten and made to perform from the time he right. was two? Yeah. I we mean, let it happen. You see, Christine, it's yeah. our fault. Right. We could have intervened 
at any place back 25 years ago. Well, now folks die as cats. Now, you're innocent until proven guilty. Of course, we don't want to, you know, uh, pur purge him on this <laughs> network right mm -hmm. now. But I mean, the the fact that I was referring to is also the parents that of where alleged abuse took place, they would drop him off, drop the kids off and say bye. Sort of the same thing like you're a never never land ranch, but where are the parents? Yeah, well, right. any uh, the, either there's gold digging parents going on that were like, well, I don't know, he's a freak, but maybe we can get some cash out of it. That's entirely possible that that happened too, mm -hmm. because uh, really any man who dyes his skin and wears a fake face, uh, and you're gonna let your kids sleep in his room. Tell us how you really feel, Robbie. Yeah, well, it's, I, I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. It's. I, I mean, I, I don't even have kids. And there's, I can't even conceive of such a thing. Right. But isn't, don't you yeah. find it somewhat sad, especially, I mean, Paul, you deal with maybe people, stars not to the extreme of a Michael Jackson, say, but people who have, you know, had problems adjusting or for that transition mode. Well, I deal with it all the time. Look, I, <clears throat> I've been in young celebrities' homes where I'm taking hypodermic needles out of the couches where I have to diaper the babies and go buy food because nothing is there. Really? Uh, sure. And it's all been really quite public. A Jay North who was going to kill the John Landis who was the director on The Twilight Zone. Mm -hmm. uh, and Bonaducci and Todd Bridges. Yeah. I deal with that every day. But I do it because I look over my shoulder and you know something? There isn't a whole lot of people doing what I'm doing. Uh, and the fact is that when we change the structure, and we have fundamentally, at least here in California, we can alter the way work is conducted when it comes to children. And since I'm uh, relentless about this, and, and people know that if you tick me off, it will get into the press. Remember, a good part of this progress mm -hmm. is because I go on talk shows like this. Mm -hmm. And I can promise people that if you abuse an infant, as happened on a couple of big medical shows, I'll give you five pages in the Washington Post and the New York Times. And we see need more people like, like you, Paul. But there are people like me. They're there all are. over the country who have had enough, mm -hmm. enough of this, enough Britney Spears, enough Michael Jackson. We got to take care of our kids. Hey, guys, thanks so much, Paul Peterson. If you need more information, just log on to www.minorcon.org or in a pinch, go to paulpeterson.com. Okay. You'll find me. And, Robbie, you're in a band. Where can we catch your band? Uh, just go to robbyrist.com. Okay, cool. great. Uh, there's like stuff there. <laughs> guys, thanks so much for joining us today. A very, very important topic, that's for sure. Now, if you have a story idea or would like to send us your thoughts or comments, you can contact us at ReachOutLA. That's at AOL.com. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next edition. Until then, have a great day.